when I stood inside the Pontifical Gregorian University Press watching my doctoral dissertation rolling off the Vatican Press with their official stem. You see the papal tiara and the cross key and the official imprimatur. Folks, this is the only book that has ever been published by the Vatican, by Vatican Press, with their official stamp of approval given by two examiners, the rector of the university and the Archbishop of Rome. And let me hasten to say that this book has been a hot potato for the Roman Catholic Church. It has generated far more controversy in the dominant countries of Central and South America that you can imagine. I could show you a newspaper published in this country where they are really denouncing me, like this is from Puerto Rico, El Piloto, the whole center fold of the newspaper is a, what shall I say, is a bitter attack against me. They are accusing me, attacking me uh, of being a wolf in sheep clothing, they say. They explain that I use deception to enter study, to have access to the archive and gathering all the material. They felt that all what I did was through deception, by hiding my identity. In other words, I was an Adventist infiltrator inside the Vatican. All of this is total nonsense, absolutely nonsense. They spent months and months and months to process my application because I was the first non-Catholic to apply and they didn't even know what to do with me. So it was a long process. But some of you, <laughs> some of you may be wondering, Dr. Bacchiocchi, by the way, you are free to call me Brother Sam. Wherever I go, I tell people that Bacchiocchi is too complicated to worry about. One thing I like about America, you always like to simplify things. So simplify my name and call me Brother Sam. Brother Sam, what made you decide to study at the Gregoriana? This is the entrance there to the university. After all, the Gregoriana is a leading Jesuit university, you know. It is the Alma Mater. It's the university that was founded by Ignatius of Loyola, the very founder of the Jesuit movement. It's the university that has been the Alma Mater of all the popes, cardinal bishop of the Roman Catholic Church. Even this present pope is an alumnus you know, a, a graduate of the Gregoriana. Why did I go to study there? The answer is rather simple. I told you already that the Sabbath has been a testing truth in my life, that I was dreaming that the Lord may give me the chance someday to do an in-depth investigation of the Sabbath Sunday question. In fact, let me tell you something. As I went through the Adventist Academy in Florence, four years, Adventist College at Newburgh, four years, Adventist Seminary here at Andrews, four years, I must have prepared, written over 20 research projects dealing with theological historical aspects of the Sabbath. This was a burning question in my heart because I had suffered a lot for Sabbath keeping. So I was hoping that if the Lord would open the door for me to study there, I may have access to the libraries, to the archive, and find documents, documents that shed, shed light on how the change came about from Sabbath to Sunday in early Christianity. Now, my admission was problematic. Why? I was the first non-Catholic to be admitted. You know why? Until recently, they did not allow non-Catholic. It was only at the Second Vatican Council that was held in Rome from 1962 to 1965 that a provision was made for the separated brethren. Oh, I like that. I used to tease my classmates. I'm so happy. I am not a heretic anymore. I am a separated brother. And how can we be separated in Jesus Christ, you know? It was at Vatican II that the provision was made for the first time to allow the separated brethren to study in Pontifical University in Rome. There are five of them. I was the first one to take advantage of it. And the last one as well. You will, hear, you will learn about it in a moment why. And... <laughs> They interviewed me for two solid hours. They wanted to find out if perchance I was an Adventist spy entering there to do subversive activity. It's amazing that I have been uh, labeled as a spy both outside and inside the church. Even in, in the Adventist church there are those who have been circulating. Even the last week I got a 12-page um, publication where they are trying to construct a case against me, making me into a Jesuit spy, 
paid by the Vatican to do subversive activity in the Adventist church. I wish that these people, before writing out all of this nonsense, would take time to talk to me or even to read what I have written. Then they would see that they are wasting their time because I'm a deeply committed Seventh-day Adventist. I pay the high price throughout my life to stand up for the truth that we cherish. All of these accusations, they are fabricated by people that have a conspiracy mentality, you know. Finally, they admitted me on one condition. What was it? They told me that while I was there in the classrooms, in the hallway, I should do no proselytism. I was supposed to keep my mouth shut, which is not easy for an Italian to do, by the way. <laughs> but you know what happened? I was there as a lay person. I was not wearing a monastic robe or a priestly robe. So I was an object of curiosity. They always ask me, to which religious order do you belong? Because all of them belong to various monastic orders. And jokingly, I would say, I belong to a special order, the Adventist order. And they would scratch their head, which monastic order is that? <laughs> that gave me a marvelous opportunity for me to share my faith. Even in the classroom. You know what I remember? I remember my beloved professor, uh, Vincenzo Monachino, often at the end of his lecture would ask me the question, Samuel, how do you Adventists understand this particular you know, teaching or dogma that we were uh, studying in the class? And I was always very happy to give an answer because I was only supposed to speak if I was interrogated. Whenever he asked me a question, I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now I can speak. I remember the day. Careful now. I remember the day. We were, when we were discussing in the class the Vatican plan to anticipate the first Sunday Mass to Saturday afternoon, which has been implemented, by the way, everywhere around the world today, Catholic can fulfill what is known as the mass precept by going to church on Saturday afternoon. Are you aware of that? Everywhere you go today, Catholic who cannot make it to church on Sunday can go to church on Saturday afternoon or Saturday evening, attend the Saturday mass, and that will be good enough for uh, fulfilling their Sunday uh, mass precept. And my professor asked, Samuel, how do you Adventists feel about it? You must be ecstatic about the fact that we Catholics are becoming more and more like you Adventists by observing the tail end of the Sabbath. I said, Professor, thank you for asking. I could only speak if I was interrogated. Thank you for asking. But you know what? The Saturday afternoon mass may be good enough for Sunday keeping, but not for Sabbath keeping. Why? Because I said the essence of Sabbath keeping is not just going to church. The Sabbath commandment doesn't say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy by attending Sabbath school and divine service. It doesn't say that. That the essence of Sabbath keeping is giving priority to God in our thinking and in our living. And for us as Seventh-day Adventists, all what we do on the Sabbath, whether we participate in a corporate worship experience or whether we enjoy formal fellowship, you know, visitation, recreation, all of it for us is an act of worship because it springs out of a heart who has decided to honor God on his holy day. Mamma mia, he should have seen my classmates and my professor. They were looking at me say, do you mean to say that all the Adventists give priority to God on the Sabbath, consecrate their Sabbath time to God? Well, I said, I cannot speak for everybody. In every church, there are those who don't practice what they profess. But this is the way we understand the Sabbath. Isn't it true? Oh, what a pleasure it was to be there and share the faith among so many 5,000 students coming from 91 different countries.